And it's a rematch of last year's uh, Fall State Championship game at uh, Freetown Ball Park. It's a side and the Royal Tan Rams here. This feedback is the last of the match. I do along with this. My man, what's your logo? Let's go, boys! Off, uh, Rattan, and uh, it's going to be um, the same pitching uh, matchup for uh, the uh, Rams uh, coming in uh, to uh, today's contest. Keegan Robinson, the uh, big lefty, is going to be on the mound. Uh, he uh, got the win in the uh, state championship game. He's going against the Rebels again here tonight, Asher. Come on! I was uh, oh, going to uh, take advantage of their scoring opportunities, uh, much like they did yesterday uh, when they uh, knocked off uh, Tupelo and the Tigers ace Davin Weather 3 0 in the first round of the uh, tournament. Uh, Weller, who is a Tommy uh, Sonny, also uh, Robertson, another uh, Tommy Sonny out there on the mound, the big lefty. And, uh, he's getting the start here once again this afternoon of the season for this uh, matchup. See what the Rebels can do with him here. Uh, I think he uh, got the victory in that uh, state championship game in the uh, fall. He came around in the uh, gray uniform. Breaking the wall and then fouls that one. In the 2 2, upstairs for a ball. Go kick, go kick! Sander trying to work his way on. To begin the contest. Next pitch from Robertson, it's called up. So, uh, Zane fighting at the uh, play here, and it's the leadoff battle. Uh, Robertson has seven pitches from Robertson, the big senior lefty. And, uh, 
All right, folks, <clears throat> it is the fourth and final game of day two action here at the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic. And we have a rematch here of the Class A Fall State Championship game between the Rattan Rams and the Silo Rebels. The Rebels enter the tournament new to Class 3A on the season. Ground over to the second baseman, 4-3, and the full count shot goes the way of the Rams. <clears throat> Pitching tonight for Rattan, Keegan Robertson. Should be a fun game to watch. We've got pretty much seven games in the books. A couple of surprises for score results. None from really results so far. But so far, the most competitive game of the tournament concluded with Wright City holding on to defeat Worcester 3-2. to two. So the best games of the tournament probably back-to-back, -to -back actually. Tupelo rallies to beat Allen 3-2 on a blooping shot out to right field where the second base, first base, and third player, the right fielder all converge. It bounces off the glove, lands on the ground, and the base runner was already home and had tagged before the ball hit the ground. First game of the day, Valiant run rolled Roth 10-0. So that makes our fifth place game tomorrow at noon, a battle between the Valiant Bulldogs and the Tupelo Tigers. Third place game now has half an entrant as the Worcester Wildcats await the loser of this game and the Wright City Lumberjacks in the championship game at approximately 4 p.m. will await the winner of Rattan Silo. The walk for the Rebels has a base runner now on first Gardner coming up to bat. Those of you that are softball fans, the Oklahoma-Kansas game now 14-0 Oklahoma. Robertson with the money pitch gives him the outside high corner. As we announced yesterday, two finalists have been announced so far for the Pitcher and Player of the Year awards for baseball 2024. Logan Smith and Keegan Robertson of the Rattan Rams. So congratulations to both of those players. We will be naming a couple each week throughout invitationals. We have another small player as well that will be recognizing, I should say, small class, awesome player that will be joining the list. But we'll announce a couple more next week during coverage of the Atoka Woodbat Tournament for the 21st Annual Sean Hall Memorial. 1-2 pitch count, Robertson with the money pitch on its way outside, anticipating maybe a potential stolen base going really high and out. Robertson, state champion, back-to-back -back season, spring and fall. Just so happens to be a, a trifecta working on for three consecutive A's. Base runner goes. He's going to be in safe. Stolen base for the Silo Rebels. It has been Bumblebee Thursday and Friday at Rattan High School. As the weather has gotten nicer. Had overcast day portions of the game, sunny. House up to bat down number 15 for the Silo Rebels. And we have had some gusty winds, otherwise probably more home runs. Three teams hit home runs yesterday, four total. Only one home run earlier today, and that was for the Worcester team. Their second of the tournament joining Wright City with two apiece. Silo Rebels being the other team to go yard yesterday in their game versus Tupelo. A 3-0 win for the Rebels. Two down here at the top of the first. Base gets away from him. The ball gets away. Correction, base runner will still get safe as he trots down to third base. So the Rebels looking at a 2-0 pitch count for House and now runner in scoring opportunity here to start the game. Deep roster for the Rebels. And in many ways, their baseball academy 
and just complete depth for junior high and junior varsity players. I know at one time they had about 38 players that they could use, uh, which for Class A, 2A, even now 3A school, pretty large. The 2-1 offering, swung on. Swings, pulls it. Air. It's going to fly right high field. to Over second to the base. Second base and he snags it out of bounds. And so it is a four-up, three-down yeah, inning for the Rebels. we will head to the bottom of the first with the Rams coming up to bat. You're watching Prep Nation TV. In the uh, top half of the first inning. Rebels get a base runner, but leave him aboard at third. And we head to the bottom of the uh, first inning. That's and number 10 coming to bat. We come back. I thank our coverage sponsors for today's live stream video highlights and plays of the game. Boom Works Fencing and First Bank. The conclusion of this game will have up at the offensive and defensive plays of the game. In addition to video highlights for the entire game. Yesterday we had two splice feeds, so I apologize. Starting the game with Roth. And Worcester, we had a encoder panel that would not update the first part of the inning. As a result, we had two clips spliced, identified underneath the videos tab on Prep Nation TV as full clip. And then last night, we had an inning error glitch for the fourth inning. And as a result, we signed off at the end of six, thinking it was a final score of 8-0. And instead, it ended up being a 9-0 victory for Wright City over Valiant. So that game likewise listed as full clip if you want to watch both games in their entirety. Hernandez on the mound for the Silo Rebels. What can you say about this man passing by? Absolute playing and coaching legend in the state of Oklahoma. You won't meet a single person in Antlers, Rattan, Batiste, probably outside of Broken Bow, that doesn't know who the Clays are. Between Michael and his brothers all playing and winning state championships, coaching state championships, and doing so in multiple sports, baseball and softball, and then basketball as well. Just an absolute family tradition for the Clays. It's my pleasure to be here to cover our first ever Rattan baseball tournament at the annual Ram Classic. In high and tight, so it'll be ball one for Silo. A little bit different look. Brittany Salisbury is at third. Zane Sander at the short. Kobe Smith plays second. Charlie Gardner at first. And All right, 2 0 count. In the outfield, Casey Spalding and left. Sean Weaver and Sidney. After yesterday and today's format of 12, 2, 4, and 6, tomorrow we will drop down to three games only. The Roth Tigers eliminated earlier today. The Allen Mustangs eliminated in the second game of the day. And so tomorrow, the wicked rip out to right field flies out and one down. Fifth place game will feature Tupelo versus Valiant in the B versus 3A tournament game. And then we will know half of the bracket for third and first. And the other conclusion of this game, we'll know the matchups approximately 2 and 4 p.m. Worcester will wait the loser and Rod City the winner of the 10 silo. <coughs> in for the low strike. Evens up the pitch count 1-1. One, one. Rams with the fly out and then now looking to get on base joining Silo. Rebels able to get to third base before they squandered the run. Gabe Hernandez gets the outside corner so it's a 1-2 pitch count favoring the Rebels. Goes high and outside, so the ball is hit and popped up foul. One two pitch count will resume for the Rams, digging in deep at home plate. Silo and Rattan. Very much at uh, last ball's uh, state finals. And there's a, Check uh, swing, swing almost uh, goes. We're going to get a safe call on first base. So the judge confirms the count will be 2 2. No swing on the check. 
Sooners once again in the fourth inning had the bases loaded against Kansas. Wow is all I can really say. 14-0 lead for the Sooners. And this game cannot go into run rule territory until the Jayhawks get at least a bat in the bottom of the fourth. Here comes the next one from uh, Hernandez. Swung on. Chopper whips down the third base line. It's going to go foul after the second hop. 2-2 two, two count will resume. One down for the Rams looking to get on base. Check swing. He does go. Third strike. Base on ball attempt. And he is going to be safe. So Bob wins the battle between the throw and the catch. Just off the mark and absolutely just not the best throw. That's the easiest way to describe that. Robertson now for the Rams up to bat with a base runner in position to advance. Been looking forward to this matchup ever since the championship game at Bricktown and Chickasha Ballpark. And Rattan looking to pull off the third ever three-peat in school history. Silo streak of continuous consecutive Class 2A titles will come to an end. However, not for lack of winning, but unable to play for it. So the streak has an opportunity to continue. This time they'll have to earn it the old-fashioned way, moving up in class and taking on the top dog in the Washington Warriors, the two-time defending and reigning state champions. Sands the 2020 COVID scandemic. Silo working on a seven-peat. They've played and literally... Nine of 11, Fielder's Choice goes one and six. So gets the immediate out to the shortstop at second base. So removes the base runner from second. Robertson in with the non-hit with the infielder's choice. First baseman had position to probably run over and tag. However, the trajectory of throwing to second would have been thrown off. So he takes the leadoff runner on the 3-6 toss. Childers on the first one and calls it. 0-1 pitch count, two down with Robertson on first base for the Rams. Each team has a runner on. Rams one up the Rebels here with two on in the bottom of the first inning. No courtesy runner out there for him. Out there running for himself at first base. So, oh, one the count. And the next one. Outside and high evens up the pitch count, 1-1. One, one. One one the count. Down the pipe for the strike. Hernandez puts it right in point. So Gabe trying to work out of this uh, first inning. They hold the Rams for them. Muddy pitch on its way in the dirt. One hops. Robertson will still be in safe at second. So both teams having opportunities now to get base runners at second. Rob Rebels actually advance to third on a wild throw. And the Rams now advance to second after losing the lead off runner. Robertson now in potential scoring position for the Rams. 2 2 pitch count will resume. Runner on second, two outs for Rutan. Now, oh, cross swings, up. catches him Foul up high. Right That's going to stay Gardner in play. At He's going to run out of position, though. Just out of his reach. So 2-2 two -two count will resume after the Reached foul ball the runs over in the, the practice batting cage. That boy, James. Two balls, two strikes. Young man here at the plate, a baller. He was one of our best of the best festival players of the tournament. Gabe 
Swain checks the run in second. Pitch home and checks Swain. Check Swain, and he's going to say he did not go. That one was, no, he does go. That's who it is. Strikeouts in the score through one inning. Silo zero, return zero. Rebels will be up to bat. Top of the second inning coming up. You're watching PNTV and coverage of the 2024 Ram Classic here at Rutan High School. scored us in the second. Are they uh, first? On to the second now. It's silo nothing in Rattan. Back with more coming up. Here from the uh, Rattan Spring Classic semifinal. Hey, good evening, Ryan Shade. Just go. Is James a junior or a senior? Childers. On the Sooner score, Oklahoma 15, Kansas 0, top of the fourth. Bases remained loaded for the Sooners. So Robertson uh, finishes up his uh, one more concert here in the uh, second inning. All right, Salisbury will be up to bat, top of the second, to start the action again for the Rebels. Check swing goes down the pike for the strike. Cross body shot, it'll fly right out field. to right, Coming problem right ball, field. snags it though. Fly out to right field, one down for the Rebels. In the outfield, but making the catch on it. So we got a top line to, uh, top out to uh, shot right field. The next batter, the strike. Boy, the end for the strike. That time from the, uh, lefty. Mendenhall looking to get the Rebels back into rhythm and on base once again. And back-to-back -back pitches, the swing and the miss on so an 0-2 pitch count. K time. Fly out to right, strike out, two down for the Rebels. Mendenhall is retired. Weaver now up to bat for Silo. And, uh, to the plate comes Sean Weaver. Pitcher's duel continues between the Rams and Rebels. Robertson in high, ball one. Two down, nobody One one evens up the count. Check swing goes foul. One two on the pitch count. Good crowd here tonight at Rattan High School. Probably the feature matchup of the weekend. This would normally be what you would consider to be a championship type game between Rattan and Silo Leaves. So back to back strikeouts for Robertson. Showing off, kind of throwing. Stealing and dealing. Rams will be up to bad, bottom of the second inning coming up. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the Ram Classic here for 2024 at Rutan High School. Oh! 
right, here we go, folks. Bottom of the second underway. Rams coming up to bat. Ready hit the quick. Coach Clay delayed, had something important to say. Had the whole team out there other than the batter at the plate. Ready to go here for the uh, bottom of the uh, second inning. Here we go. Are you ready to get ready? Let's go. Okay. They want to drive it. Oh, he and high ball one. Oh, shade. One hop chops. That one's going to hook foul, though. So we'll have a 1 1 pitch count when we resume. Can't get to it before it rolls around. It's Shay Cody at the uh, plate. Oh, you softball update. Nicole May heads out to the dugout, done for the day. She inherits a 15 0 lead for her time and troubles. I believe Ms. Peyton Monticelli will be in for left. the centers to close the show. Top of two. Right now from right field. We'll resume with a one-two pitch count here. Uh, it is beautiful weather here at Rutan High School. Okay, time. Stay on that outside, killer. Check swing, ball goes in the dirt and Definitely outside to the pitcher's dugout. First pitch in the dirt, bounces to the uh, backstop. It's obvious Gabe's got a lot of movement today. 1-0 is the pitch. Here's the 1-0 delivery and it's strike one. And for a strike 1-1. One, one. Evens the count of 1-1. One one. Let's go, Gabe. And out here in the bottom of two. And, upstairs. and high ball two, two one. Two one. Deep fly out to center field. Right field is going to snag it though. And the Rebels thwart any opportunity for the Rams to score. It is now two down after the fly out to center. Ford with a uh, nice catch out there in uh, right field. He gives him the outside corner, 0 and 1. Strike called the next batter. Back to back, 0 2 advantage now for Hernandez. Zayden uh, Watts is the batter. He's quickly behind in the count at 0 2. Gabe rocks and fires. And Again, high for ball there. one. Here's the next one for Gabe. Again, low inside corner, 2 2. Got even at two and two. Money pitch on its way. Here Working comes the rubble ball. The pitch. And it is a strikeout. Your score through two remains zero, zero. Rebels coming up to bat, top of the third. You're watching PMTV coverage of the Ram Classic here at Britain High School. More coming up here on Rebels.tv. Been a pitcher's duel thus far between Hernandez and Robertson. Neither team really getting any hits of note. A couple of base runners stranded. Rebels able to get to third before left on base. Rams hit into a sack. Infielder's choice play at second and then got the second base runner, Robertson, after the stolen base back at second. And that's as far as the Rams have been as well through two innings of play. Sometimes teams with good offenses struggle when they face teams with really good pitching. Um, that is the case with Robertson here. Hernandez not necessarily the first in the pen or rotation for the Rebels. 
but he has definitely done exceptionally well early on in the game. Oh, here we go to the uh, third inning. <laughs> and down the pike for strike one. You're all right. Come on, Gordon. Strike one to Ford Standard. Ford getting the start in right field with that. Right. And it'll be high evening up 1 1. And he evens it up at one, one ball, one strike. And Gets him in the dirt, one, two, otherwise would have been a ball. Couldn't connect. That's the pitch there. Ford hitting 500, limited at best. And the next one, swing and a miss. K-Time. Robertson definitely bringing his A-plus game early on. Robertson with another strikeout. Cali County. He's holding up to bat for Silo here, looking to get something cranked up. They had a big first. Looked like they might even be threatening to score right off the get-go. Got all the way to third and then stranded. 1-1. One, one. Leading the team, 545 average. The end high, 2-1. Makes contact 2-2 two, two on the pitch count, hooking foul. Money pitch on its way, ties him up, hooks foul right, down left field line. But he pitch on its way and gets him swinging. We're going to have another third strike base on ball, and he's going to be at first before a throw, even made. So the team's now one each of Bob making base. I'm happy to ask me who Bob is. Base on ball attempt. So the third strike, Bob record today, 2-0. Oh. Bring Zane Sander up. Take it to ground ball. Come on, he wanted that advanced run, boy. He was already on first base where the catcher could even grab the ball to throw it. Hooks it foul. Pitch foul oh, one pitch count. Zane worked that nine pitch at bat. First time up before uh, grounding out. And, uh, second base. In the the next one. Out Hooks over opposite direction. There's the new lingo as Oppo. So one, two on the count will resume. Step back, had the ball been lower, would have been a tag off, as is in safe for the Rebels. One, two pitch count will resume, one down here in the top of the third inning. Hooks it, it's gonna go right over the dugout. Sander working another quality at bat, seeing a lot of pitches here. One, two. After that nine pitch at bat in the first inning. Spalding leads away. Pitch home from Robertson. Check it's swing low. doesn't go, 2-2. Two, two. And Zane was able to hold good, off. Good. Lay good. off it that okay, time. Okay. Come on, Zane. 
Checks first, pitch home, way outside for a ball. They were trying to bait the base runner into that one. I'm going to tell you exactly what Robertson was trying to do. He elongated the left leg. He wanted to freeze the base runner and then get a pitch out in effect to the catcher to fire back down the first. But the breaking ball was read by the base runner and he didn't bite. He does go this time, which is a good move because the single will put him on first and second. So Robertson gives up his first single of the game. And two runners now on for the Rebels. One down, top of the third. Steal attempt by uh, Spalding kind of opened up the uh, hole there, the uh, shortstop. Childers is going over to cover, but uh, Sander still lined that one into uh, left field. It probably would have got through anyway. So, uh, Rebels have two aboard. With one out, threatening here in the third to take the lead. Face in the uh, Rams face. All right, Cole, come on, let's go. Preseason, uh, Cy Young, and candidate uh, in Oklahoma. They got lefty Keegan Robinson. Here's the pitch. Shows Bun. I've never understood the ball calls on bunts when the bat is elongated, stretched across home plate, and it does not make contact. It's just impossible to say that that's a ball when the barrel was squared up across the plate when the ball came across. But they're going to say the ball was in the dirt, it was low. But that is a textbook strike. Robertson set, comes home. Checks again. And that one is a strike. Officially and again. <laughs> A ball and a strike here to uh, Colby Smith. Beautiful evening game here at Rattan. Sun still shining. 6.50 p.m. Final game of the day determining who will be in the championship game. Goes down to punt. Can he get the infield single? And he does. So two hits in the same inning. And Robertson now has lost the perfect game and the no-hitter. And subsequent innings. So Rebels threatening here with Gardner coming up to bat, only one out. Just a reminder, any base is a forced tag. So Rattan looking to go home or tag and throw. A chance at the play with one out, and they're loaded here against Robertson to give the Rebels the lead. A pitch home, it's low for ball. low for ball one. Charlie. Charlie, 10 RBIs on the uh, season, that's second on the team behind House. Here's on deck. Here's the next pitch to Charlie. Oh, breaking ball, breaking in. ball in, beautifully done. The off-speed part to it really throws and discombobulates. You think it's going to come in high, cuts, or breaks down, and just drops right in the strike zone. Here comes the next one. Beautiful and effect. One-two pitch count after fouling off the right field line. Go, Let's go, Charlie. Now probably going to see something nasty here. Right? If they come back in time, call. Head coach Michael Clay is going to go to the mound to speak with Keegan Robertson. We'll have a break also for head coach Eddie Robertson Jeffco to talk with batters and base runners. A lot of of hits now in this Top inning. of the three so far. In the game. It is a tie ball game, 0-0, but the Both Rebels are threatening to score here in the third. One out, one two pitch count. Runners on first, second, and third. You're watching PNTV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Baseball Classic. Meeting on the mound is over. First short visit, right team. Reason why the ump discloses that short visit is OSSAA rules mandate two visits in the inning, and it is an automatic replacement of the pitcher. So you have to be very careful on the short visit. That's why he's giving him a reminder that a long visit will mean a pitching change. Pitch home, swing and a miss. K-Town. 
Gardner unable to make connections, so it'll now be two down for the Rebels. Catcher has to take off the shim guards as he comes up to the plate. House looking to be the hometown hero for the Rebels and drive in a run. And he's got an opportunity here with the lady. Trying to score the first run of the game. Robertson rocks and fires. And, uh, Inside and corner, ball one. I think I just felt our first raindrop. I'm hoping that's just condensation from the building. Go to work, Jim. And the next delivery. Ripped out to left field. Scores one. They're going to hold them. And Silo jumps out to a 1-0 lead. Bases remain loaded. A two-out RBI single. Courtesy runner for the Rebels at first as well. Number 14 coming in to take the spot of House. So he is the hero so far in the game. On the run to score, Rebels jump out 1-0 lead. First time in the tournament that Rattan has trailed. An RBI single to left. Update on the OU Kansas softball They're game. They forced them to go five three. innings. I've never understood why run rules can't be called after Eight four or three for that matter. But they have to go five, and it is 16 0 Oklahoma with runners on first and third. So One House out. Salisbury steps back out of the box. He'll head back in. 0-1 is the pitch count that we'll resume. Swing to miss. 0-2. Shallow fly to center. It's going to be a problem ball. Over the shoulder, showing off by the shortstop. That was a dangerous play if he didn't make it, though, because he had impeded and blocked the path of the center fielder. So the Rebels will score one. However, they strand the bases loaded. So the Rams dodge a big one there. We'll head to the bottom of the third inning. You're watching PNTV. Well, that'll end the... Uh... Sooners now up 17-0 on Kansas. Runners at first and second. One run, three hits, and a three left on base. We head to the bottom of the third. Saddle up, one nothing. One with ten. Back with more coming up here on SaddleRebels.tv. Oh! Rebels 3-0 victors yesterday over Tupelo. They lead Rattan 1-0. So through the first nine and a half innings of play, Rebels yet to trail. Thus far, only Wright City has got that ability to brag as well. They beat Valiant 9-0 and the victors again today 3-2. Technically, that game did have two ties. One over one, two, one, two, two. And the single for Rattan busts up the no hitters now for Hernandez. So, in top bottom portions of the third, pitchers lose any rights to a perfect and or no hitter game. Take strike, shows bunt. And high and tight at first, back safe again. It's going to be a second strike. 0 2 will be the pitch count that resumes. Luke Tabor, the batter, then back to the top of the uh, okay time. Another strikeout. Hernandez whips him, so one down. 
Don't load. Don't load. Thus far for Hernandez, he has been sharp. Five strikeouts in the game. Sooners ended to a double play, so it is now 17 0. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Jayhawks will be up to bat. Cross swing goes foul. Opens up the pitch count 1 1. One out, one runner on. Fouls it off the other way. One on, one out. Pitch on. Swing and a miss. And gets him in the dirt golfing one, two. Good way off it. Good junk or off speed change ups are worth their weight in gold. You can really make a batter look foolish quick. Really nice drop ball there that just sinks in the dirt. Swing and a miss. Two down. Good. Get that breaking ball and James got it working today. Oh, Benelis. Strikeout number six for Hernandez. Here comes the next one from Dave. And it's in there first. Hernandez in on the money, 0-1 oh, on the count. Ellis at the plate. Dave's working quick. He's feeling it right now. Next one is one, one on the pitch count, low in the dirt outside. Base runner from Rutan been very passive, not really trying to get much of a lead. It's been held pretty tied on so far. Pitching win against Montour, Pennsylvania. And the short will have a fielder's choice out easily, nicely done. So Rutan hits into a 6 4 fielder's choice tag. Strands one taken off the path. We'll head to the top of the fourth inning. Silo leads 1-0. Rebels coming up to bat. You're watching PNTV. Inning number three. No runs a hit. And a man left. On to the fourth. Silo one. Rotan nothing. Back with more coming up here on Silo Rebels. TV. Across the sport on network. All right, folks. I'd like to thank our coverage sponsor for today's live stream, video highlights, and plays of the game. Boomworks Fencing and First Bank. Eighth official game of the tournament. We'll have three on tap tomorrow, high noon. The fifth place game will feature the Tupelo Tigers versus the Valiant Bulldogs at approximately 2 p.m. or after they set the field again. Third place game will feature the Worcester Wildcats versus the loser of this game. And at approximately 4 p.m. or after they set the field, the Wright City Lumberjacks will await the winner of Rutan and Silo. If you haven't given us a subscribe, please do so. Just go to the home channel and click subscribe. It is free. It prioritizes content when you're in the YouTube app, so you'll be more likely to see our videos and content when you use the app. More importantly, it makes it possible for us to be able to get sponsors for the coverage so that it is live and free rather than you paying subscription for video on demand and live broadcasting. Infield pop-up fly. This is going to hook foul. It's going to go off the field. The wind kind of catches it and it takes off. The wind blowing that direction. Back to the That's why you got to reach up and stay. So, uh, men and all. Ready to go. One win to count to Sam. The pitch. That's the strike. Down the middle. Beautiful pitch. One, two. Right there on the inside corner. From uh, Keegan Robertson. The big lefty. The Cali County. Sonny. And the pitch home. And he had a low ball, too. Evens up the count. Two, two. Got a sign here. And the 2-2 two -two pitch, that's upstairs. Outside high, 3-2 for Kent. They're making Ryan some work. All the uh, Rebels. Lane Sander got it started with that nine pitch at bat to start the game. And the next pitch, swing and a miss. Strike out. So Robertson back in command on the count. 
We'll have one down. Weaver will come up to bat for the Rebels. Sean Weaver in the next bat. Hey, Red Bounce out there. In the pitch, the Weaver is a strike tank. In high, but tight. Difference in the game so far is a Jaron House RBI single in the third inning. And breaking the ball for a strike two. Robertson dealing here. 0 oh, 2 money pitch. Strikeout. Back to back outs for the Rebels. Back to back strikeouts once again by Robertson. Well, the worm has turned again. Rebels had the momentum in the top third. Struggling here, top Robertson of the fourth. One hop chops on the foul. Gabe Hernandez thus far winning the battle of the aces. If you want to call it aces and eights, so to speak. He's more of a two or three for the Rebels. Looper out to center field. That was going to drop quick. Well, the right fielder perfectly times it and flies out. We'll have the bottom of the fourth inning with the Rams coming up to bat. You're watching Prep Nation TV. So, uh, fairly quick inning that time for uh, Sooners defeat Robertson as the Jayhawks 17 uh, to nothing. In order in Oklahoma the, uh, rolling toward a potential fourth consecutive national championship in dominant fashion, taking the series. I think it's been going all the way back to 2013, if I remember correctly, since they lost a Big 12 series in softball. This will be their final year. Um, I believe they've got series coming up against Central Florida, Houston, and Texas, if I remember correctly. Okay. Oh. Hernandez back out there on the mound. Uh, talked about this yesterday. The Rebels got two uh, pivotal district games coming up on Monday and Tuesday. They got Charlie Gardner uh, through uh, just uh, over 75 pitches yesterday. He should be available on Monday. The Rebels ace after uh, going going yesterday's Come contest. Now Hernandez uh, working here in the uh, fourth at 45 pitches. But those are uh, two uh, important contests in this play as uh, F.A. Zadabell is the only other undefeated team in the district. It's 7-0 in the district right now. The pitch from Hernandez to uh, Robertson is high for a ball. It's got to be in the back of Eddie Jeffcoat's mind uh, that uh, the district games on uh, Monday and Tuesday. And One hops in the dirt. We had a 2 1 pitch count. Gabe has, Hernandez has not started the district contest. Two balls, one strike. Okay. Here's the 2 1. Swung oh, this one's sky This seemed to pop up high on the wrist. It's going to fly to the left fielder, calls off the shortstop, and there is one down. <laughs> Ram bats continue to be stymied by Gabe Hernandez and absolutely pitching exceptionally well for the Rebels. Bring shoulders to the young play. He watches upstairs for the in high ball one. When the wind has blown today, which it's been most of the day, it has really stymied high swing Next uppercut pitch. hitters and jacked the ball way up and just kind of froze it and so, hung it. Uh, has been one exception today. Worcester went yard and went all the way over the line. The one -one and, uh, it's got kind of a calm in the storm or pause, if you will, and then drove it deep over the wall. Here to Childers. 
Outside corner, 31. Definitely want to avoid blocks in the Rebels game. But uh, three of them have count the uh, Cheddars. And he for the strike for count. I can't think of a better way to get a strike called than just to assume you can go to first base before the ump says something. Most of the time, it is a strike, even if you think it is a ball. Here comes the payoff pitch from Gabe. And, it's a and he walks him. Rams once again with the runner on first. One out, kicking. Yeah. One out, guys. We have a correction on the scoreboard operator. It is one out. Cody the batter. One runner on for the team. Rips it up the middle. Flies out. Tags up. And back in safe. Ball gets away. Goes back to second. So, in effect, it ends up being a sack fly. A little ping pong effect uh, going on there. The, we, the runner is going to move all the way to. Uh, so we have two down now for the Rams. So the error, they're going to say the ball holds it. So he gets to advance an extra base to third. And now we have a runner in scoring position for the first time of the game for the Rattan Rams. Brings the tying run to third as the throw sailed the first base and over into the uh, Rattan dugout. In high for ball one. Thus far, Hernandez has had the cushion of having the lead and having the majority or plurality of base runners. This is the first time in the game that Rattan has threatened to actually score. Robertson did make it briefly to the second base position before being stranded. But now with third base and two outs, Rattan one swing of the bat away from tying this ball game. Throw it to first base to try to double off the runner. It's got to be something to drive. First time of the game, it appears Hernandez laboring and having problems commanding of the pitch. Money pitch on its way down low in the dirt. 3 0 count. If you're a Ram batter, you can be patient here now, forcing to throw three straight strikes. All you need is one ball to get that perfect spot with the bat time and rip it. And walks in, runners on the corners for Rattan. Right, the second time in the game that they've technically had two runners on. They momentarily had it first and second and then had a fielder's choice tag at second. This is the best opportunity for them yet, first and third. Down low again, ball one. Well, Hernandez either not trusting his stuff for a strike pitch, head coach Jeff Coat will head out to the mound. It is still so bizarre to see Eddie in red, blue, and white. The, uh, the white, not the problem. The Kansas City orange, red, and yellow, the problem. Silo obviously losing Hall of Fame coaching legend Billy Bowen to retirement. Coach Jeff Coat making the way over from Dale where he had been junior high or middle school coach. My Jerry Sanford was there, another Hall of Fame coaching legend. And coach Jeff Coat getting the call up. I think this is his fifth fifth full fall spring combo. Third year starting. Not sure if this means that there is no change coming and they're letting the players just kind of self-coach each other. It appears to be the strategy Coach Jeff Coat is going to take. So likewise, Jeff Coat will have a short visit now and then any potential walkout during the inning will result in an automatic pitching change. We'll resume again with the 1-0 pitch count. Runners on first and third for the Rams. Here's the 1-0. it off, 1-1. One ball, one strike. Game back in the strike zone there. 
Just off the mark, looked to be a good pitch. 2 1. Check swing. It's a good idea that one went foul because it would have been a three unassist tag getting over. Saw that happen to Wister earlier today. Over swing on a strike trying to drive somebody from second in. Fell down, bat hit the ball, rolls right down the line. Pitcher just grabs it, runs with it. Oh, Lord have mercy. What were they thinking? What were they thinking? What were they thinking? Run will score no matter what the play is now. And Silo with their first error of the game. Mental error and official error just not reading the play the right way. You fake the throw home, but you go pitcher. When you're dealing with a cross one, two combo, you always go to the shortstop that has the better angle or you fire over immediately to first so that second base and shortstop can coordinate who's going to cover the bag and back up, which is usually the shortstop backing up second base unless the shortstop takes the lead and the center field backs him up. So, miscue allows the Rams to make Silo pay here, and it's a 1 1 ball game. Okay, we've got a full count. <laughs> count is full. Runner goes. Yeah. Immaterial there on the stolen base. He, he could have done cartwheels down the line, and with the walk, he is automatically good. Just a reminder, any walk to the mound for Coach Jeff Coat means automatic pitching change. It's, it's regrettable because Gabe has pitched exceptionally well. Um, facing Keegan Robertson, number one. Keegan's one of the best pitchers in the state. Um, regardless of class, there's some kids in 6A and 5A, 4A. They're just as good, obviously, but he is the best of the best in small class. And Hernandez, tip of the hat to him. He has held his own here early on. It's not his fault they gave up the score. However, he did have the walks that put him on base. But thus far, it has been a pitcher's duel between Rattan and Silo. 1-1 one, one is the score. Whips it right. It's going to run out of space. Play is very close, though. So we'll have a 1-1 one, one pitch count resuming. One ball, one strike. Jumps. Even at one. And uh, that one. Foul ball. One ball, two strikes. Just move it. Don't cop. Don't cop. Base runners testing the catcher's resolve. So back to back full counts for Hernandez. Arm fatigue definitely kicking in here. <coughs> Sorry about that. And so first trouble of the game for Hernandez and laboring to get the outs. Obviously, they're going to go for the potential count. So they'll both have to go back again. Batter remains 3-2. Ready to go, pay off pitch. Great time, bring him up. Your score, three, four. Silo one, Rattan one. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic. One run, no hits. 
Well, we'll now have our second ball game within a ball game. We're past the halfway point. Both teams have scored a run. And it is going to come down to this particular point, who wins the pitching duel, and more importantly, who can put the runs on the board. Advantage swings back to Robertson and the Rams, in my opinion, based upon the pitching uh, prowess and then just the sheer number of pitches Hernandez threw in the fourth inning. Really looked to be worn out and warm. So we'll see if they stend somebody back in the dugout. I've got a pretty good view here. We've got a player running laps, so I don't think we have anybody going out there to start a soft bullpen. So yeah, that's just player running. But if we do have a substitution for Hernandez, we'll do our best to let you know as soon as we see any activities warming up. There's kind of a smattering of fans behind the walls, so there's really only two places to put them for a makeshift bullpen over there on the opposing dugout. Okay, good evening, bud. Who goes? Uh, the first pitch of the uh, fifth inning, Casey Spalding is a uh, ball. There's the next one, and that one missed. Hey, go at him, let's go. Rebels trying to find a way to get that uh, run back. Nine, one, and two in the water coming. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, two more. Robertson now at 74 pitches for the game. Two one. Good. <laughs> All right, we've got a baseball deficiency. So if there's anybody that's listening, <clears throat> that usually means that the ump has less than two balls in his possession, and they may not be necessarily pitching balls. Strike out. All right, so that, in effect, means he only has one pitching ball. But he's headed over to Coach Michael Clay. We've got three of them coming in. On the screen. Those of you who want to know the lingo, good balls are left bag. The right bag are questionable scuff balls. They will only use those in events of like raining or something that's not going to impact the flow of the game. Another Robertson strikeout back to the top of the order and it's on the table. Each umpire is a little bit differently, but usually after about two and a half, three innings of hits, most balls are pretty much useless and become just batting balls and filming practice balls. Well, if anybody could ever make a baseball that could make it seven innings or multiple games, you would be a rich, rich man because you could pretty much name your price. Pops him up, goes top portion of the bat. It's going to stay in play, but then it hangs at the very last second, goes on top of the dugout. Two one pitch count. Let's see what Zane can work here. He had a nine pitch at bat his first time before uh, he uh, ground out. And that uh, line single. That was the first hit. In, uh, Fires over, 5-3 ground out. Two down after the strikeout, and now the ground out. Good, Keegan. Hard ground ball to third. Two gone. Cutty Smith the next batter. Had a bus single his last trip. Ready, Ben. Come on, let's go. Get it Oh, 
problems every time he gets Two old count. Pitch from uh, Robertson. And Just off the mark. Trying to find his way on again. He had a walk his first time. His left string. Here's the 3 0. And. <coughs> <coughs> I was trying to get something started with two outs. Come on, come on, Ian Hyde tied for the full count. Good, can you get that one? Tied 1-1 one, one here in Rotandana. Robertson comes up, pitch home. And boxing, base runner on once again for Simon. Quick. To Colby uh, Smith and uh, batting for the first time is going to be Brayden Hill. He came on defensively. Oh, look good. Hill is on. Number 20, now batting for number 25. Here we go. All right, 2 0. Number 8. Stand by. Okay. Stand by. Number 8. Number 20, now batting for number 8. Okay, good, thanks. Hill batting. Hill hitting for two. Here we go. Uh, season. For uh, Brayden. Five uh, RBI. Trips up on the bat. Brayden got some power. If he could uh, get around And he'll have to go back to first. Uh, Colby was on the move. Still was uh, 10th base of the uh, season earlier in this contest. Look at first here from Robertson. And the outside corner there. Take the beat right here. Come on, 20. Get back. Oh, he's going to toss over. Yeah. And gets the always safe. I don't know about that one. That one looked pretty the close. Was a little bit hey, off line. It's going to be high on top of the tack, so he had to tap the down the, uh, after catching. The tack one was razor, razor thin. Better, 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 better. And K time. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning with the Rams coming up to match. Your score remains Rattan 1, Silo 1. You're watching PMTV coverage, the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic. And Robertson just keeps dealing. Good work. Well, based upon that back end, book end innings, <coughs> advantage swings hugely in favor of Rattan now. We'll see if Hernandez comes back out on the mound to work a fifth, and he will. He's going to have his work cut out for him. Rattan really timing his pitches better and making him work, go higher in pitch counts each time. And so we'll see if we have now a game within a game, so to speak. Yeah, he's normally up here eating in that building. Yeah. Well, we get
So nine, one, and two in the order coming up for a team. Ah, don't help him. Let's go. Swing miss. It's a table down. Oh, look. Got two big ones left. Here you go, game. Come on, Jack. 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 Come on, all right, shot to second base, 4-3, ground out, one down. In time. Throw that Colby's had to make that. Now, if an arm injury, but uh, makes it cleanly that time. So, out number one. Smith to Hill for the out. Back to the top of the order in Slogan Smith. Uh, game got him on... Uh, Pretty wicked uh, breaking balls. Uh, That's it. All right, Gabe. Hold on, come on. Let's go. Comes the next one to Smith. It's in the dirt. Box to the back stop. Coming in about 84 feet. That's a bit off speed. 1-1 one, one pitch count will resume when the batter has a chance to kind of shake off the Charlie horse there. A bit, uh, awkward look. Here to kind of one hop off perhaps the catcher's shin guard and then ricochet off of his knee. It's going to fly out to left field. Wind hangs it high and tight for the fielder. So it's a fly out and two down. Well, after struggling in the fifth, Hernandez looks to be much more comfortable in the sixth. He's already got two outs and, more importantly, no base runners. Silent retain. Hernandez and Gabe uh, misses upstairs. Six three misses the ground out, but gets the tag out portion. So we'll head to the bottom. Of correction, correction to the top of the sixth. Rebels will be up to bat. Ty remains. You're watching PNTV. Quick work of the uh, Rams there in that inning. Nine pitches for Hernandez in the fifth. No runs, no hits, nobody left. And we're on to the sixth. Still tied at one for Matan tonight. Hey, let it go, though. Let it go. Quite as many uh, strikeouts for Hernandez, but he has matched Robertson nearly pitch for pitch thus far. Robertson 91 pitches through uh, his work in five innings. Gabe at 80. All right, folks, here we go. Top of the six okay. underway, Rebels coming up to bat. Hernandez with seven. And we're tied at one. Top of the sixth inning. And the Rebels will have the heart of the order up as Jared House will lead things off. And he's got the uh, one RBI in the game. That's the last time up. The leadoff batter. Infield fly to shortstop. And it is one down. 
Uh, talk about an efficient start to the six for the Rams. One, one pitch, one out. It's hard to improve on those numbers. So thus far, the uh, Rebels have out hit the Rams three to one. <laughs> but a couple of miscues defensively. Uh, ended up uh, costing him a uh, run. Hit. All right, way to work ahead, that boy. Call to Salisbury. Robertson. Yeah. Yeah. sign and the pitch home. And it's going to be off the outside point. Very squares, pulls back, and that one one back. hopper in the dirt. We'll have a 2 1 pitch count now with one down here in the top of the sixth. I'd like to again thank our coverage sponsor for today's live stream, video highlights, and plays at the game First Bank and Boomworks Fitzy. Callie Kelly, uh, Sonny, on the mound for uh, the uh, Rams right here. Two outs, two on, two on. He misses outside. It's three and one. Okay, get in there, bud. Get in there. And one hops in the dirt. Walks in. All right. That's a one-out walk. Rebels have potential game-tying run at first base. And we're coming up to bat. Board, and we're going to have a pinch hitter. It's going to be Bryce Four Vandenberg to uh, pinch hit. <laughs> Vandenberg's going to pinch hit for a minute and a half. One out, new batter, Mark. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ball very close, stolen bases in the air. Bryce is 250 in the season. It's a couple of RBI. Comes the pitch and outside and low. Oh, so what plagued Hernandez much of the fifth inning seems to be kind of happening okay, to okay. Robertson now here in the sixth, not getting many strikes, having to go deeper in pitch count, uh, pitch counts, and more importantly, base runners now on. Here's the next one. The end for the strike. The third is issued. Head coach Jeff Coat will meet momentarily with Vanderberg. He'll be a substitute or courtesy batter in the order. So coach wanting to get the maximum bat productivity here that he can. He can't really afford just to throw down a sack bun for the sake of advancing the base runner. In this particular case, you really need somebody to put the ball in play deep. Like it looks like to me that whoever wins this game is going to do so probably with two or only three runs. It is not going to be a massive scoring game unless something just dramatically changes. So it's going to come down to who makes the least amount of errors the remainder of the game and who can get that elusive second or third run on the scoreboard. Back in action, 1-1 one -one pitch count will resume. Muddy pitch down in the dirt. Rebels may be looking to slash Fakes bunt, pulls back, swings. He'll go 2 2. Foul ball remains. The count, 2-2. Two, two. Breaking ball in. Oh, beautiful. 
Hey, good spot, that boy. Just an absolute gem of a, of a pitch. Interesting. We've got our second consecutive substitution here in the batting order, which also will be the the lineup order. The exceptions to coming in and out. If your original starters, you can come back in. So these may be required to go into the field for one play before they come back out. Not 100% sure on the rule on that, but uh, very rare that you have back-to-back -back courtesy runners, especially with a 1-1 ball game. But unfortunately, that's what happens when you have 1-1 ball games because the starters aren't necessarily producing. And the coach has to either hope that you snap out of it or make a change to try to get a catalyst to do so. 0-2 pitch account favors Robertson. Fires with the pitch, and it's a swing and a miss. Well, the rival... The rivalry between these two teams. Has it been your traditional rivalry due to distance? Rebels known for playing the, the Pirates from Dale. Rattan pretty much takes on all comers in the state. It's become two of the Cadillac programs in the state of Oklahoma. You can look over at the banners on top of the batting cage and see the most four recent state championship photographs and poses. Testament to the ability of a small town coach to be able to attract and maintain talent and maximize what he does have. Rutan climbing the list, getting ever so close to cracking inside the top five for most state titles in history. It's going to be tough to catch Asher for anybody. Dale on the two perch right now, passing Bing back in the day, silo leapfrogging Bing. But having said that, Rutan is chasing Bing right now for that coveted fourth spot for the most state titles ever in baseball. So the Rams will be up to bat. Robertson, starting pitcher, will bat. 3 4 5, I believe, on the starting lineup. Ram pitcher. Bottom of the sixth. Anybody's game here in a 1 1 time. Silo scored a run on an RBI single. The Rams got a run scored on an error and then wild throw. I believe they've only got one hit in the game. It just seems to be like, okay, that can't be right. Check that stat. Rebels with three, Rams with one. Check swing and goes. <laughs> Catcher can't help it. Tags him. I love it. Beautiful skyline tonight here at Rattan High School. I hope you enjoy it on the camera. Outside, ball one evens up the count. <laughs> Second base, bobbles, and he's going to get him still. 4-3, nice way to stick to it, young man. And Robertson can't make that an easy out either. He was rolling down first base line. Oh, James, get it started, bud, get it started. He got it through just in time to get Robertson for out number one. All right, here we go. Shows bunt, takes ball. Hey, good idea. Down in the dirt, back to back balls, 2 0 pitch count. Nice stay on it, driver James. Walks in the last inning. Chops it to third base, stops, fires. Way off the bag, safe. Definitely looked like the foot did come back down on top of the bag. There are silo fans not happy, screaming, hollering, pointing. But unfortunately, the throw is high and forces him to come off the bag. The only debate is, is whether or not he got back down with the foot before. And he is going to be overruled, so that is going to be an out. Silo's thrilled. Rattan won't be so happy. 
That'll be the second out. In my personal opinion, again, this is my opinion, I believe he was out because the catch drew him in the air. However, he went right back down on the bag, and I do believe he beat the base runner by about half a step. So I believe in the end they got the right call. Oh, what could have been for a 10? Second single in the game. That would have put him on first and second. There is two outs. Center field. Inside corner. Hernandez, to his credit, has self corrected. He looks refreshed, looks ready to go. And I see no reason why he wouldn't be in the seventh inning no matter what happens. Oh, Keller! Come on, Gabe. Tremendous stuff. Go with it. Come on. Go with it. Go with it. Come on. Go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Go Go with it. Go 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 Just off the plate, looked to be a pretty decent pitch. 2-2. Two -two. Oh, killer, oh, killer. Here's the next one from Gabe. Ian Hyde, 3-2. So the only deficiency Hernandez has had in the game is he has lost control and command of the ball and going up higher in pitch counts with some 3-2s, three 3-1s. Three Couple of walks. And it is ball four. So what could have been on the bang bang play at first base? With the single, you would now be looking at bases loaded for Rattan with only one out. Instead, two outs with runners at first and second. And again, I have no problem sharing my opinions. I think sometimes referees definitely do miss calls. I think sometimes they do allow the fans that get really outrageously worked up to influence them. But in this particular case, I believe they got the call right there. It was very, very close, though. Go ahead, run at second base. Here's the pitch in the dirt. One hops in the dirt. So again, Hernandez struggling with pitch command. Back in another pitch deficit. Look at second, pitch home, swing on, off the right side. Pops it up in fouls. Pitcher's goal tonight here for the team. Hernandez trying to work out of the six inning Come on, Zayden, come on, Zayden. Keep it tied to the seven. Here's the next one, upstairs. Oh, boy. And now 3-1. Outside ball four. Huge, huge turn of events. Two outs, bases loaded. If the pitch does not go on reversal on the throw to first base, that would have walked in the second run for Rattan, and they would be up two to one. Bases would be now second and third, and there would be one out. So in back-to-back -back innings, coach heads to the mound, and we will have a pitching change. So Gabe Hernandez is done. His official stat count will be 6.2 innings pitched 
Correction, 5.2 innings pitched. So he does not make it quite six. No pressure, as they say. No pressure, no pressure, no pressure. You have to get one out at a time. In this particular case, Silo needs one out total. Rattan with their best opportunity to take their first lead of the game and looking to do so here in front of the hometown crowd. A bang-bang play at first base reverses a safe call, becomes an out, and then now base runners first, second, and third. The junior, Landa Langley, on the mound. Uh, let's see here, and uh, on the uh, season now, he, uh, making his fourth appearance. He has a 1-0 record with one save for uh, Langley. And 11 innings pitch, he has allowed three runs, two earned on six hits, struck out four, walked two. A 1.27 earned run average for uh, Langley, and uh, what he can do here. Salisbury's taking some uh, tosses out there in the infield as well. So he's going to face the left-hand hitting toss. All right, folks, here we go. Bottom of the six resumes. Rattan up to bat. Bases loaded. First time in the game that the Rebels have been on their heels. And Rams looking to take their first lead of the game. Fouls it back off, as you can see in the net. A absolute beautiful skyline tonight for the baseball game. I just I hope that people that are watching can enjoy that. God's creative ingenuity on display. Oh one, here to cop. Pitch home. Good, good. Away. Good, out and good cop, good boy. Langley in a big spot here. With the base is loaded. Pitch home. Swung the right chopped at the plate, but foul. One and two. Langley's got his son. The pitch home. Swung on. Oh, Infield pop up. This is going to shift out to left field. Flies out. Rams strand three. What a huge call on the bang bang play at first. It would be 2 1 right now with the second out right there being on the fly out. We score through six. Silo one. Rattan one. You're watching Prep Nation TV. In the sixth, we move to the seventh. Silo one. Rattan one. Back with more coming up. 105. <laughs> So on to the seventh inning, Keenan Robertson back out on the mound. The uh, standout lefty for uh, Atan. Cali County signee and uh, 105 pitches on the night. Uh, he's got 15 remaining in the pitch limit. Uh, puts Michael Clay sends him back out here there in the 1-1 one, one game. He has allowed three hits to the Rebels. One run. It was earned. Dan has two hits on one hit. Or one run. But it was unearned. Eight, nine, and one in the order. It's Cord Standard's going to start things for the Rebels here. Rebels have made Robertson work for the most part. And uh, that call to uh, begin the set. Standridge wants time. We got nothing time in the box. 
Okay. He said uh, uh, Standards was calling time on uh, the Robinson balk, but uh, Robinson can't cause a balk there. Hello, baby! That was the first ball oh, state. All right. For those of you wondering, just kind of went down. The referee repeated it three times. Batter can't cause a balk, so you're forced to game in. Time out, time in, time out, time in. To repeat that each time. Really took his time on that one. Nice, nice throwing, but it would have been better off to probably get that ball out a little bit quicker. One down for the Rebels. They are now down to their final two outs. On one game, though, this could go extra innings, and if it does, Robertson getting close to being maxed out on the pitch count. I think he's got 12 left, maybe 13. Half to sit him after 120. He's allowed to extend facing a batter. If he goes anything more than a batter, for example, he tried to do an inning or close out an inning. He can be appealed and he can be suspended from the next game. It in effect triggers a forfeit and then you have to replay. Fly out to left field. Looked like it was going to go deeper. Wind catches it. Flies out. And two down. Smith makes the ground. 112 pitches for Robertson. Two down here in the seventh. All right, here we go, folks. Two down, Rebels batting top of the seventh. They had an early 1 0 lead. Scored in the top of the third on an RBI single. Rattan scores in the bottom of the fourth on a wild throw after an error and a chase down between second and first. And the throw, obviously, error at home plate. Double errors, though, pitcher and second baseman. Roberts. Time is called. Batter pulled back, will resume, time in. 0-2 pitch will resume. Robertson now steps off the mound, so we have a little gamesmanship going on here between batter and pitcher. And back in action again, 0-2 count. Here comes the 0-2. Ian Hive, ball one. The inside and low. Ball two. Good shape. Good shape. K-Town. All right. The Rams had a chance to win this by walk-off. Could it be? Could it be? Could it be? We are looking at potentially our second walk-off of the day. Tupelo trailed the entire game against Allen. They tied it up multiple times. Last in the seventh inning, they were down 2-1. to one. Tied it up 2-2. Two, two. And then won the game 3-2. to two. That has been the favorite score in the tournament today. At a 10-0 run roll and then back-to-back 3-2 games. Wright City Worcester and Tupelo Allen. Somebody's going to win this game. You just don't know who it's going to be. And if it'll be in regular format for the seventh inning. We've got a confirmation. I believe Keegan Robertson now at 117 on the official pitch count. So for all practical purposes, he would get one batter face to get an allowance. Otherwise, he is done for the game. Bob 
Bottom of the seventh here underway. I'd like to thank Boomworks Fencing and First Bank for our live stream video highlights and plays of the game. If you appreciate what they do, show them that with your business. And if you appreciate what Prep Nation does, give us a subscribe on our channel. It's free and it helps us to be able to get sponsors to make our live stream and feed coverage free without requiring subscriptions. 1-0 pitch. So Gabe Hernandez goes 5.2 innings before he's replaced. Robertson is going to make it the full seven. However, I don't know that he's going to go any extra innings after that. I stay on it. As an original starter, he'll be able to get a bad here in the seventh inning for sure. And then we'll see how it goes if he requires extra innings. Oh, breaks down, beautiful pitch. One, two. Swing and a miss is right. It is struck out and on, Logan. one down. They find a way on, Logan. Does anybody want to go fast? We need a Ricky Bobby and batters here. We need somebody to go fast, go fast, go fast. the mark and for the strike. <laughs> one one pitch is on its way outside and low ball two. Rams looking to win this game, having never led throughout. Sidewell had a 1 0 lead for an inning, went up top third, and then tied the game bottom of the fourth. Since then, both teams have been held scoreless. And 2 2 count. I got a bigger left, got a bigger left. Dirt ball three. Good. And walks in. Base runner on for Rattan is the potential game-winning run. So, yes, it is a big deal. to try to jump that and get a run. However, he didn't have much of a lead off of first prior to the pitch. Obviously not looking to get thrown out trying to steal on a late jump. Go, Ben. Go, Ben. Quick throw close. One pitch count after the strike is called. Base runner goes. In safe at second potential game time run. Now in scoring position for the first game winning run. In position for the Rams. Second, pitch on, swung on. Oh, buddy, that could be it. That could be it. 
and it's a game winner for the Rattan Rams. They walk off with the RBI single. Final score, Rattan 2, Silo 1. Your third place game tomorrow will feature the Silo Rebels versus the Worcester Wildcats. That'll be at approximately 2 p.m. The fifth place game will start at high noon between Tupelo and Valiant. And your championship game will feature the Rattan Rams versus the Wright City Lumberjacks. Thank you for watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic. Final score, Rams win. Rams win. The Rams win.